for the boys class A championship basketball game between Staunton and Chicago Hales Franciscan. Joe Passion back with you on the assembly hall floor but what better way to find out about these two teams than to talk with two coaches who have played both teams twice both losses. They may not want to talk about it but Don Davis and Aurora Christian played Hales lost twice both games in overtime including the super sectional. If you had to go a third time Don how would you recoach them. Well, we, I've seen them eight times now this year. You have to handle their pressure defense, and they use, they'll give you about three different looks. They'll give you a man-to-man, -man, a full-court trap, and a half-court trap. Tom calls it his amoeba defense, and it is tough. You're going to have to rebound with them, and you have to run the court with them. If you can do those three things, you can stay with them. All right, and Jim Lavkov from Bunker Hill High School played and lost to Staunton twice. Jim, how would you take him on a third time? Well, I, I would do the same thing that uh, he said. I would try and press them as much as possible and make their guards work. And it, even if we didn't steal the ball, I'd try and make work Cuba work. And uh, I'd have to hit the boards a lot harder. All right, guys. Well, congratulations for you guys getting as far as your schools did this year. Hope you enjoy the game. Hope you will, too, because we'll be back to preview our boys' Class A basketball championship game right after this timeout from the Assembly Hall. And a message from one of our local sponsors. The Staunton Bulldogs went to the Twilight Zone to get their way against Hamilton in the semifinals. And for their coach, Randy Legender, he is back to earth as he goes to the championship game. Tom Shields of Hales, meanwhile, predicted his outcome. Okay, if we want to lead the ball, if we get the lead and the ball, Spartan time and we'll win the game. say welcomes you to the state boys class a championship game hello again everyone well it's time the bulldogs or the spartans for the class a basketball championship before we get down to the x and o's about these two teams let's find out how they got here hales franciscan with a clutch win over carroll in the semifinal on a buzzer beating shot by lonnie brown and then staunton of course had an easy way with hamilton winning by 10 points in their semifinal to reach this championship game for both teams their very first time here now both teams come from very very different type communities and before we get to the x and o's on the game let's go back to their communities and find out the origins of these two schools of Staunton, located in southwestern Illinois, about one hour from St. Louis, is one of the state's oldest communities. Founded in 1817 by John C. Wood, farming and coal mining were Staunton's original industries. Nicknamed the Bulldogs, Staunton High is just over 1,000 students in all grades. Staunton Mayor Fred Bauer's son, Derek, is a member of the Varsity Boys basketball team. Chicago's near south side, Hales Franciscan rests within a few miles of the University of Chicago. The Museum of Science and Industry and the new Comiskey Park, home of the Chicago White Sox. Hales, an all-male black parochial school, has a long tradition in basketball excellence as well as in higher education. An inner city school striving for academic excellence, Hales receives support from the Michael Jordan Foundation. against Chicago Hales Franciscan. The boys class A championship is coming up next from Assembly Hall. To set the table between the Bulldogs and the Spartans, let's send it now over to half court and Greg Sterk and Jim Albert. Thanks a lot, Joe Passion. Two into one dream. There are two teams remaining for the ultimate dream, of course. One of those teams, the Staunton Bulldogs, and Joe Passion talked with their coach, Randy Legender, just moments ago. 
Uh, give us an update on how you're going to deal with this team. What concerns you most about Hales? Well, I think obviously, I'm sure you've talked about it, the uh, up-tempo type of game that they play. We uh, we are generally a half-court offense, you know, half-court offense. We need to concern ourselves with uh, taking care of the basketball, trying to slow them down in transition. Mr. Legender needs to get his big man in this ball game. That would be Mr. Kuba and Meyer. Well, Kuba and Meyer are the good inside threats, and they had a big ball games this afternoon. Kuba has the ability to go out on the floor. He plays all three spots on the floor. Had 20 points, 11 rebounds in the ball game this afternoon. Got some help from Meyer also. Meyer chipped in with 11. Hales Franciscan coach Tom Shields has won one state championship. That was with Providence St. Mel. He's trying to win another one here, and Joe Passion chatted with him moments ago as well. Tom Shields, real, real quickly, Tom, uh, give us an injury update and how it will affect your game plan in taking on Sean. Well, Sean uh, is here in the hall. He's, he's warming up. I told him at the end of the warm-up, uh, let me know how you feel. Uh, I need an honest answer, so what do you think you can give me a couple of quality minutes? And playing the Staunton team, anything specific? Well, we have to, I think, establish defensively um, some defensive superiority if you can and try to get some offensive transition off of the defense. Two of the big players for the Spartans, the hero of today's semifinal game, Lonnie Brown, and of course, Mr. Consistency, Greg Wood. Well, Greg Wood's their All-Stater. He's very consistent. He had 17 points in the ball game this afternoon. He's the inside threat. On the outside, you've got two outstanding guards in Ralph Williams and Lonnie Brown. Lonnie Brown had 25 points in the win. He's the fellow that hit the big basket up and over Carroll. It was about an 18-foot jumper that put him in the championship game. It was Lonnie Brown who had the big basket. There's only one of these every year. The Class A State Championship coming your way from Assembly Hall following these local messages. There are the records, and these are the starting lineups, compliments of PA announcer Steve Adams at Assembly Hall. Championship game featuring the Bulldogs of Staunton High School entering this game with a record of 26 and 4, and the Spartans of Chicago Hales Franciscan who come into this game with a record of 23 and 10. At forward for Staunton, a 6'5 senior, number 50, Andy Kuba. At forward for Hales Franciscan, a 6'6 senior, number 40, Kaim Cunningham. At the other forward for the Bulldogs, a 6'2 senior, number 44, Brad Skirdich. And at the other forward for the Spartans, a 6'5 senior, 31, Keith Stanton. At center for Staunton, a 6'5 senior, number 52, Kevin Meyer. Center for Hales, a 6'5 junior, number 30, Greg Wood. At one of the guards for the Bulldogs, a 5'11 junior, number 20, Ronnie Hampton. And at guard for Hales, Franciscan, a 6'2 sophomore, number 21, Lonnie Brown. At the other guard for Staunton, a six-foot junior, number 42, Jeremy May. And at the other guard for Hills, Franciscan, a six-foot sophomore, number 20, Ralph Williams. Let's meet the coaches. There's our head coaches, Randy Legender, and his starting five that you just saw here take the assembly hall floor. And of course, Chicago Hales Franciscan, led by that man, Tom Shields. He's been in the business 15 years, three years at Hales Franciscan. And now we will look into the huddles and send you away for just a minute as we come back for the state championship game at Assembly Hall. One of your network sponsors is Toyota. Your Toyota dealers are... 
Here's our Car X Factors of the Game brought to you by Car X Muffler and Brake. For mufflers, brakes, and shocks, don't worry. Call the Car X Man. If you're stunting, you want to control the tempo, you don't want to get a, a run and gun type of a basketball game up tempo, you got to handle the pressure defense of uh, Hales. And if you're Hales, you got to control the inside game of, of Kuba and also uh, of Meyer. And you've also got to uh, really pick up the tempo and play some up tempo basketball. Those starting lineups you saw were brought to you by Zenith. The quality goes in before the name goes on. On and Staunton, who wants to control the tempo, controls the tip. We'll set the lineups for you. Number 20, the point guard is Hampton. This man with the ball is Meyer. That is Kuba, and he will go to the free throw line in the first 14 seconds. Our officials for tonight's Class A state championship game, Clive Hornstein and Robert Redmond. Kuba comes in here as the second leading scorer in the tournament in Sweet 16. He has hit 59 points in three games, right around 20 per contest. That is his average, and he lights up the board. Now, let's be honest, Greg Sterick. A lot of people in Assembly Hall think this is more or less like Cinderella taking on Goliath, and Cinderella is wearing red right now. And she looks good in red because she's up 2-0. Well, Cooper and Meyer, they'll have a lot to say about that, how well they can play inside against the Hales defense. Tyene Cunningham, number 40, is starting tonight's ball game. Sean Baker is on the bench, the usual starter, but still trying to recover from the flu. Out front is Ralph Williams. He is one of two quick guards that Tom Shields uses as a weapon. Three-pointer there. Ralph Williams puts his team in front, 3-2. And now the pressure. Ken Staunton handled the pressure. Kuba does, breaks it up nicely. May has trouble with it and waits for help. And now they lose it out front. This is Lonnie Brown. One against everybody. It won't go. Rebound is fought 4-1 by Ralph Williams, who has a quick five points here tonight. And here comes the quickness. Here comes the press right here. you got to pass over the top of this press. See how you pass back? you got to pass over the top. And they do it nicely there. Skirtage gets it over to Meyer. That's an easy two. Nice look over the top. And then Skirtage, a nice look. Meyer, a good job running the floor. A good start for Staunton. Hales, though, on top by one at 5-4. It's extremely important that Staunton thinks they can play with this team. Oh, I think they can. Seriously, I do. I really think they can. A lot of people feel like Hales is, you know, is the favorite, and they probably are a favorite, but I don't think it's going to be easy by any means. Well, there's a great screen out, but nobody went and got the basketball, but now Kuba does, and Staunton, trailing by one, has the basketball. The game of basketball at this level is so mental when you're dealing with 15, 16, and 17-year-olds. And, of course, Staunton got off to terrible starts in the first two games down here. Inside, Meyer is rejected by Greg Wood. And here comes Williams. Will he wait? No, he'll fire from 17. Doesn't get the result he wants. Skirtage with a rebound. Staunton off to a much better start than they were in the quarter and semi-final games, but of course they came back to win both, as you alluded to. Better to have a good finish <laughs> as opposed to a bad start. Meyer misses. Kuba does not. Yeah, Kuba all over the offensive glass. A good start for Kuba on the inside and offensive rebounds. That's a surprise. Kuba right there and he gets a nice stick back and Staunton takes the lead at 6-5. Kuba and Meyer average around 37 points between them a game, so they are the main cogs offensively. The guards don't score all that much for Coach Randy Legender. You see Staunton's match, matching up. They're a man-to-man -man defense, but see how soft it is? They're just backing off and trying to give some help on the inside, but it is a man-to-man, -man, but it's a very soft man-to-man. -man. Cunningham will drive, force it in and out. Rebound comes down to Meyer, and Cunningham will pick up the foul. Kyeen Cunningham, the 6'6 senior, Good and get it to fall. Good shot. I don't know how it came back out of there. Well, the team comparisons. Field goals about even. Three-point field goals give the edge to Hales. Free throws stomping a little bit better. Rebounding size and quickness. I think you have to give the nod to, to Hales, but uh, ball games aren't decided by team comparisons, are they? No, they are not. That's why we're here right now, and that's why you're out there watching the IHSA television network. We're glad you're with us across the state of Illinois. Meyer turns, spins, won't get the bucket, but he will go to the free throw line. It doesn't look like Meyer 
And Mr. Kuba are intimidated at all, at least yet. No, they're going right at him. They're taking it inside right there. And Meyer, a good look at the basket. He was fouled on the play, but Burnham with a personal foul. It's going to send uh, Meyer to the line to shoot, uh, shoot free throws. And Kaim Cunningham with two quick fouls. That'll bring in David Stennis, the freshman. He is the son of DePaul great Skip Dillard. And I'm sure Mr. Dillard is in the hall tonight or watching along with you. Free throw won't find the soft touch. One shot, guys. One. You will see a lot of number 30 for Hales Franciscan tonight. He's Greg Wood. Of all the great players in the city of Chicago, he is one of the top five, one of your network sponsors as we take a break. Early on, Staunton has the lead by two over that man's team, Tom Shields. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. Stanton has had some great moments down here at the Assembly Hall floor. Stanton, of course, one of those guys going to the Ivy League. He's going to Dartmouth on a basketball scholarship. Hit two big threes. Yeah, he hit two big threes. And the, the semis had 13 points, and there he is spotted up looking for the jumper one more time. The tip is not there, and the rebound belongs to Kuba. What Stanton is doing is just forcing the outside shot. They're going to pack it in until... Hales Franciscan makes them come up. And they're limiting their second and third chance opportunity. Woo! Hampton, a nice move right there. Found the seam in the defense. Hampton was right there. Hampton with two points. Staunton with nine. Meyer and Kuba with seven of those nine. Stanton again. No. Whistle underneath. Foul on Greg Wood, it looks like. Yeah, Greg Wood, the All-Stater, will pick up the foul. That was a pretty shot by Ron Hampton at the other end. As you will see, watch the arc over the outstretched defender's arm. A uh, quick move, though, accelerates the first step. That's Hampton off the dribble drive, stays with it nicely, follows the basketball up and down through the basket. And the 5'11", Ron Hampton, only a junior, a nice basket off the dribble drive. Sean Baker, the man who was in his hotel room for the semifinal game with the shakes, the flu, the fever, everything else, has warded all that off, and he is now in the lineup. Down low they go. Kuba's got another two. And holy moly, folks, it's 11-5 start. Oh, they keep getting it inside. See, they're getting some easy looks at the basket, and they're really able to convert those easy baskets. Almost to travel by Brown. Now they go down low to Wood. That's where he wants it, but he won't get it to fall. Tipped up. No, tip, tip. Fought for. Cunningham has it, and he can get it to fall. That was Stennis. Correction, Stennis with the shot, but he couldn't get it to fall. So they'll recrank it up. Baker wears number 34. They'll try it again on the block to Wood. Triple team. This time he gets it done. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, well, just go to Mr. Wood again. And I showed his strength right there. That was a tough shot by him. Showed his strength. Strong in traffic. Got it off the window for the two-point. Oh, Kuba has it taken away by Brown. All the way down is Brown. He won't get it. Brown gets his own rebound, and then Kuba picks up the personal foul. I was just about to comment that... It's good to have a weapon like Mr. Andy Kuba take the ball up. He's tall, he can break the press, but he held on to it too long. Well, he, he just had his pocket picked on that particular play like right there. Lonnie Brown back the other way, that's quickness, and Stone's got to do a good job of handling that pressure defense, and they've done that here early in the ball game. They've got a four-point lead at 11-7. Who Wood almost lost it out of bounds, and now does. Greg Wood. Took his eye off it for just a second. So Staunton with a four-point lead with 2.50 remaining here in the first quarter. We saw one of the top juniors play in Tyrone Nesby of Carroll, and now you're looking at another one in Greg Wood. Wood only a junior, so he'll be back next year also. Jeremy May working it up nicely. Kuba gets it inside to his co-big man. That's Kevin Meyer at 6'5", 200 pounds, and they are just finding the easy shots off the inside blocks. Yeah, Kuba's so tough. That was a good look and a good pass that time by Kuba. Six-point lead. There's Baker. If that's a sick man, I'd like to see a well one. Sean Baker buries it. It's a four-point ball game. Staunton with the basketball and the lead. Here's Kuba. He's working against Wood. A couple of highly touted people out there. Bad pass, but it's taken back and then lost again. This will be easy for Wood. No, he missed it. He missed it, but he's going to get it back, and he won't miss this one. Well, he got a chance to make up for that. 13-11. Hales now trailing by two. This press doesn't look all that hard to beat, but they kind of step up on you very quickly at half court with those long arms. They caused some confusion. At least they have the last couple of trips down for Staunton. Inbounding to Meyer. 
Meyer has it stripped, and here comes another turnover. See, their hands are so quick. That's how they get it. Quick hands right there, just slapped away from Meyer. Lonnie Brown penetrating, kicks it out to Williams. It's up, it is not there. Rebound, Kuba. A minute 35 remaining here in the first quarter, and Staunton showing why they're nicknamed the Bulldogs. Hanging on to the two point lead, Kuba for three. Now, the rebound comes down to David Stennis. Up quickly to Brown. He'll take it if he's open. He's open. He'll not get it, though. Boy, Kuba's just owning the boards down there. And let's see if Randy Legender wants to hang for one here with about a minute 10 remaining in the first quarter. He wants to control the tempo, obviously. This might be a good place to do it. Well, I think they're going to take a shot if it's available. Still a minute to go. I think. I think they're going to go ahead and take the first available shot. They're doing a good job running their offense. They're executing, flashing to the open spots, and doing a good job. There's Kuba one more time. Six rebounds already in the ball game for Kuba. Myers miss doesn't hurt him, and now we've got a foul on Stennis down low as Skirtich took the pass down deep. Kuba's really the only guy on the glass for Stone. He's got six or eight rebounds. Good look by Hampton inside. Meyer inside. Really posted up. Nice move right there. Stennis with the first personal foul. Stennis all at 14 years old. Man, he's got a future ahead of him. Here's Kuba working against Wood. Has it slapped from behind by Baker. But again, Staunton maintains possession. Trouble out front. Ooh, almost a steal by Williams. Meyer looks for help. Skirtage with some collision insurance out there. Hampton had it slapped away from behind. This will be easy for Brown. Yep. And we've got a tie ball game at 13s, and now you can bet that Staunton, if they can break the half-court press, we will wait for one. 13-13 our score. Yeah, Lonnie Brown so quick with the hands. It looked like Hampton beating him off the drive, and then he just slapped it away, and Brown back there the other way. Look, he's going for another steal right there. And he is quick. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Kuba trying to beat the clock, give his team the lead. He does not. In and out. Back up and in his mind. Great off at the end rebound. of the first quarter. That's the way the first quarter comes to an end with Meyer making the putback. 15-13 is our score, and those here at Assembly Hall who thought it might be a blowout from the get-go may have some second thoughts. We'll return following these local messages. There's our game notes brought to you by Classic Pinnacle, and Assure 2, what makes them better is you. Staunton, first time in a championship. They've survived two overtime games on road to Champaign. Last unranked team to win championship, Pittsfield, 1991. Let's take a look at that last bucket right before the first quarter horn went off. And we're going to now go back to play, and then we'll take a look at it a little bit later. As Meyer got the putback to give his team a 15-13 lead. Lonnie Brown goes inside to Stennis, who doesn't get the cripple. Rebound fought for. Out of bounds, Taiwan Burnham. Touched it last, they say. Taiwan Burnham. A good work right there on the inside. The last basket to close the quarter. Meyer inside, really working the offensive glass. Meyer got the easy stick back. Meyer with seven points for Staunton. Kuba right behind with six. So they've scored 13 of the 15 Staunton points. As far as the fatigue factor, Hales Franciscan has the upper hand in that department because they run eight and nine people in and out. Where Staunton has only one man come off the bench and play a lot. Well, Hales just comes out and they really pressure. See there, Williams right there, a quick hand, he slaps it away. An early follow here in the second quarter, and now let's go to Joe Passion courtside. All right, Jim, thank you very much here behind Tom Shields and his bench. Tom was telling me off camera prior to the game, one thing that he can always count on his team is a slow, rugged start to open up a ball game. But one thing he also counts on his team, they've been proving him right all year long, is they get out of that and get back into the game. We're seeing an early example of it here. Kuba goes hard to the glass but can't get it to fall. Good defensive pressure down low with the rebound, David Stennis. And now the Spartans out of the... Chicago Prep Conference, of course, hailing from Cook County. We'll try to tie it up with a two. Driving is Brown. Look at that move. Beautiful shot. Beautiful hang time. Split two defenders. Little hang time. Nice kiss off the glass for two. Lonnie Brown averages 10 points a ball game, but he's got 48 in the three games when the Sweet 16 commence. Hales make a little change defensively. Now it's all strictly man-to-man -man deep. Here's May going up, getting it blocked from behind by Brown, and it's breakaway time for Williams, who gave it up. I don't know why he gave it up. That skirmish was coming from behind, and 
he was fortunate enough to be there. I don't think Tom Shields wanted him to give it up either. Now Williams had the advantage. That was the case there. They need to be a little bit more selfish and go ahead and take it strong in the glass. He had the advantage. I think Brown got a piece of that ball right there. Good outlet pass by Stennis up the floor on the play right there. Looks like Williams has got an easy one. Wanted to give it up to Baker. And fortunately for him, they got the basketball back with a good hustle play by uh, Staunton. Again, that Staunton zone defense packed in, trying to prevent an easy shot like that by Stennis, who missed his second one in close. Gets it back. That won't count because traveling was called before it found the glass. Stennis has been in close twice, and again, we're talking about a freshman here. Now Stennis now 0-4 from the floor. He, he got it in low that time. He just didn't finish. Hampton brought it up. And here comes the pressure. See how the pressure... Pressure just relentless, and it just keeps coming at you. When you pick up that dribble, yeah. they come up and they put the pressure on you, and then they, they deny on the wings. Stunt coach Randy Legender. Ralph Williams picks up his second personal of the game as Cuba goes and has a chat with Randy Legender, who's in his second year as coach of the Staunton Bulldogs. Of course, he's been in the Staunton system before. 43 and 13 in two campaigns. That's not, that's not a bad winning percentage. And he's a nice guy. He's been fun to visit with here at the state tournament. Very likable and uh, does a good job, has good rapport with his ball players. Getting the roll on the free throw is Ron Hampton. Hampton, a 75% free throw shooter on the year, so the Bulldogs don't mind sending him there. Samson Essex, also in the ball game for Hales Franciscan now, another fresh face, wearing number 41. Let's see if you're stunned, you gotta get back quick. You gotta retreat quick after that miss and get set on the defensive end. Stunned with a one-point lead. Baker with the J out front. No, Kuba high for the rebound. A lot of time left here in the second quarter. About 5.40 to be exact. May gets it in the high post. That's where they want it. Myers fouled from behind. As soon as that cut is made by the big man, you got to deliver. Well, there's a pass, a good look inside. But see how he flashes the post? See how Meyer flashes right there? Meyer just has him sealed and pinned, and Baker comes over the back with a personal foul. And we've got a timeout on the floor. It's still tight in this Class A state championship game. Don't you go away. One of your network sponsors is Toyota. Don't forget about that three-point showdown coming your way. Next weekend as the Class AA tournament gets underway here at Champaign. They'll be running classes in and out during each particular session. Joe Passion, where art thou? Well, I'm behind the bench here over where Staunton is, and I want to give you an example of just how different the two teams are and what they drink. Well, they both drink water here on the bench, but Staunton brings their own water. Like, this is Kevin Meyer's own individual water bottle. And we'll look down here and find out how it helps him at the free throw line. Well, I'm not drinking water out of your bottle, Joe. I know that. <laughs> I know where you've been, sir. 17-15 is our score right now. Staunton gets the free throw from Kevin Meyer. Good look at the senior. Meyer with nine points and the Cooper with seven. That's 16 in the 18. But Randy Legender does not want to happen is a burst, a run. And Hales Franciscan can lay 10, 12 points on you in a hurry. So far, they've been able to prevent that. And they've kept the tempo slow. They like that. They like the way the ball game's going. And look, much slower pace. Samson X. Essex tried to get it down low, but couldn't get it done. Good help defense that time. Weak side help from Skirdich, able to slap it away. If the score is about 22-21 at the half, Staunton will be very happy. Wood can't get it to fall. Kuba is there again. Well, once again, they're just limiting their uh, second chance opportunity. Kuba doing an excellent job on the glass. Kuba with eight rebounds here in the second quarter. Skirdich looking for somebody to cut. Oh, nice cut there by Skirdich. Will he get it? Yeah, he will. Good look by Kuba out front. Oh, a nice look. Kuba's got the advantage of being able to look over the top. Kuba at 6'5", and boy, oh, just threaded the needle that time. Skirdich active on the inside. Kuba spotted him. Give the basket to Skirdich. Five-point advantage for the Bulldogs. Brown trying to cut into it. He does with a sweet jumper. If I were a coach, I'd love having Lonnie Brown out front for me, offensively and defensively. 
Hampton left alone, but he won't make him pay the price. And Willie, he got the roll. Didn't look like the angle from here, but it kissed the right side of that rim and rolled left. Brown again. He's working against Coop. Baker. Yeah. See, Two in a row for Hale. Yeah, I see they're starting to warm the task, but it was set up once again by Lonnie Brown. See what happens when you penetrate. The penetration set up the open jumper. And talking about Lonnie Brown, you better mention, too, that he's only a sophomore. Hampton lost the handle. Here comes Hale's Franciscan. Picking up that loose ball was Stanton. Talk about some great athletes. The Spartans have more than five, that's for sure. Samson Essex from outside. And suddenly it's a one point ball game. Samson only a sophomore. I mean, there are times when Tom Shields has a freshman, a sophomore, a junior out there. See, they just keep coming at you, keep coming at you. And, you know, you have to really give the nod in terms of uh, bench strength to that ball. Boy, Kuba flashing Woo! to the open spot right there. Meyer with a pass right there. Good look inside as the two big men hook up. But Kuba, good job finding the open spot. Then a little quick drop step to the glass. Count the basket for Kuba. Brown doesn't want that shot from the top of the key. Will feed it down low. Nice feed to Stanton, too hard. And Greg Wood with another foul. Greg Wood has picked up another foul for Hales Franciscan. And that is his second. Now another good look by Lonnie Brown. See the play inside to Baker. Baker just can't finish. And then Wood comes in, comes up over the top. And Skirtage, a nice box out on the play. And Wood up over the back and gets the personal foul. And Skirtage is going to be at the line to shoot free throws. And on the year, good free throw shooter at 75%. As a team, Staunton shooting 68% from the free throw line. That one will not help the percentage as Skirtich misses it. On the drive is Baker. He won't get it to fall, just miss, but he'll go to the free throw line. Sean Baker is quick. He's only a junior at 6'5". Good quick ball movement right there. Nice setup play by Ralph Williams. Baker, a good job running the floor. Gosh, they're just struggling. They just can't, they can't finish. See this play by Baker right here? Comes in, Hampton gets in on the foul. I think Skirtage also got him, but the shot just wouldn't fall. He's going to send uh, Sean Baker to the line. And on the year, Baker at 70%. Comes in averaging better than uh, 12 points per ball game. Trying to make up for having to miss this afternoon's ball game. He would have helped out immensely, of course. Hales Franciscan got that big bucket with two seconds remaining by Lonnie Brown to win it and send Caro into the consolation bracket. Caro, of course, did win the third place game over Hamilton, and they did it rather handily. Here comes the pressure. Staunton leading by one. May breaks it nicely up to Cuba. Cuba and Meyer are almost interchangeable. They can both go up top. They can both look for cutters. Uh-oh. Pass got away from Meyer. Yeah, but Cuba's much better out on the floor shooting the jumper than what Meyer yeah. is. Meyer's really just a post-up player and does a good job as a post-up center. Baker trying to give his team the lead. Can't do it. Wood will try it. He does. Greg Wood, 25-24, Hales Franciscan. And now Staunton in trouble in the backcourt. We've got a whistle and a foul on Lonnie Brown, who can't believe it. Williams was there as well. He was already playing with two. An interview with Governor Jim Edgar coming your way during our halftime entertainment here at Assembly Hall. Also the presentation of the third and fourth place awards. And of course, as always here on the IHSA television network, we've got plenty of highlights and plenty of statistics to fill your basketball mind. Lonnie Brown will sit down, as will Williams. So the two starting guards now out for Coach Tom Shields as they take a rest. Two minutes, six seconds remaining here in the first half. Jeremy May at the free throw line. Well, you've got May at the line and starting a good free throw throw shooting team and they need to they need to make these opportunities count may a real good shooter you know i really think may's had a nice turn he's a player that uh, he's kind of a role player on this ball club but he stepped up and uh, knocked down some big shots he shoots 73 percent on the year from the line averages eight points per ball game for this Staunton club does Staunton have the lead they do and Staunton eight of eleven now uh, from the free throw line 73 percent essex Playing at one of the guard positions now. 
along with Turner, number 14. Turner gets it down low. Wood will force things and get it done. That is the shooter's touch. He catches down that low. He's just tough. He's almost unstoppable. May gets it over to Kuba. Uh-oh, slapped away nicely by Turner. Turner gets the steal and wants to turn it into three and does. There's a big turnaround right there. 30-26 now. Hales Franciscan as Jamar Turner got the steal and the three. And Staunton now loses it almost again, but Stanton just couldn't control it after taking it away from Cuba. We've seen the sophomore Jamar Turner do that in every ball game that they've played here. He comes in off the bench. You know, he's he's a streaky shooter, but a good shooter, only a sophomore, and hits another big three for his ball club. Hampton breaks the pressure, gets it down to May. Jeremy May cutting. And they needed that bucket to stem the tide a bit after Hales Franciscan had busted out to a four point lead. We're back to a deuce difference. Stanton travels out front. We could be tied next trip down. And I'll tell you if anybody's got a bench in this tournament it is Mr. Tom Shields. He has a bench. He basically has two basketball teams he can play. And he does a good job shuffling people in and out. You know it's one thing to have a good bench but it's another thing to have a coach that can utilize his bench and Shields has done that in this tournament. Skirtage in the corner. We have 45 seconds remaining. Let's see if Randy Legender the coach of the Bulldogs wants to hold for one and now he's going to go right to Kuba. Got it off the glass. Boy, Stanton was there, but just about a half step too late for the block. And we're tied at 30s with 30 seconds remaining in the first half. The Class A State Championship game live from Champaign. Wood. Well, Turner's going to drive. He won't get it to fall. And Staunton will have a chance to take the lead into the intermission. Well, you don't want to turn over right here if you're stunned. Even if you don't get a good shot, you don't want to turn the basketball over and give them another opportunity. Foul and a shot will go. Foul and the shot will go. Kuba somehow got the scoop up there. It'll count. And yes, indeed, it looks like Hales Franciscan will not be the leader at the half unless they can get down court in a hurry and bury a three. Well, Kuba, very active on the inside, good body control. He's got such a, a soft touch for a big fella. He's got the shooter's touch right there. He just beat uh, Stennis on the play, and he picked up the foul. And Kuba knocks down the free throw, gives Kuba 13. In a hurry as Essex, he's going to have to fire or give it up. He'll fire from three. Not there. Rebound Meyer. That's the way the first half comes to a close. Stark has the lead over Hales Franciscan. A couple of dandy ball clubs in a dandy game so far. And we are more than glad to bring it to you. Joe Passion is standing by with one of our coaches right now. That would be Randy Legender, who has to be feeling pretty good about this three-point lead. At the break, let's go talk to the Bulldogs mentor. I was mentioning to Randy this kind of game that can get coaches old in a hurry, but you got to feel a little young going into the locker room. Anything you want to add to what's happened in the first half or the second half? Well, no, I think we, we've tried to do what we talked about before the game started. We, we didn't always accomplish it. We haven't done a perfect job of keeping them off the offensive boards, but they got five guys in there all the time that can go to them, and we're not used to that. I think we've done a fairly good job of controlling tempo, and I, I hope we can do that, continue to do that the second half. All right, Coach, go get him. Have a great second half. Thank you very much. All right, Randy Legender is ready, and we're ready to come back with more of our halftime presentation here from the original March Madness in America. We'll be back to Assembly Hall in Champaign after this timeout. Welcome back to Assembly Hall. There you see the result after 16 minutes of play. 16 more to go, or will there be more? We'll find out shortly. Jim Albrecht here along with Greg Sterick. A couple of big buckets after the end of the first quarter and the second quarter, both by Staunton. That's why they lead, one of the reasons. Well, they also lead because the fact that they were able to get some good points on the inside. I thought Kuba, a good first half. Jim, he had 13 points, and Meyer, he had nine. So those two hooked up for uh, 22 of the 33 points. I also felt like defensively, Staunton a good job sitting back in that zone defense. It's difficult to rebound out of a zone defense. There's not a man there to check. You've got to pick bodies when you go back and to try and keep a very good rebounding basketball team like Hales off the offensive boards. I thought they did a pretty good job of keeping them off the offensive glass also. The third and fourth place trophy presentations are coming up next after these local messages.
Fourth place in this tournament went to Hamilton, third place to Cairo. Let's go out to see the young men get their just due at midcourt here at Assembly Hall. Number 12, Darren Monroe. Number 40, Todd Brownlee. Number 42, Sean Stevenson. Okay, here we go. Number 52, Jason Havens. Number 14, John Holcomb. Number 54, Kurt Meister. And number four, Ryan Lemon. Those are the Cardinals of Hamilton High School. And now presenting medallions to the squad members of the third place team will be Mr. Leroy Newton of Carterville High School in Carterville, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board, and Mr. William Mitz of Monticello High School in Monticello, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board. At this time, let's meet the pilots of Carroll High School, who finished the season in third place with a final record of 26 and eight. Here is the principal of Carroll High School, Mr. Jack Dunker. The head coach of the pilots, Bill Chumbler. Assistant coach, Daniel Brown, Sr. Assistant coach, Al Farmer. Assistant coach, Harry Williams. And now at center court, let's meet the players. First, number 10, Chucky Cohen. Number 11, Michael Box. Number 13, Courtney Wiggins. Number 15, Glenn Box. Number 20, Marcus Davis. Number 22, Larry Johnson. Number 30, Joe Holder. Number 33, Tyrone Nesby. Number 35, Andre Williams. Number 40, Terrace Purchase. Number 45, Michael Hughes. Number 50, Simeon Williams. Number 25, Jamail Avery. Number 54, James Merriweather. Manager, David Williams. And statistician, Marlene Schultz. Those are the pilots of Carroll High School. And now for the trophy presentations. First, presenting the fourth place trophy will be Mr. Thomas Howard of Fremt High School in Palatine, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board. Will coach Brian Stillwell and the captains of Hamilton High School please step forward to receive the fourth place trophy. Mr. Howard, if you please. There it is, the presentation of the fourth place trophy to the Cardinals of Hamilton High School. And now presenting the third place trophy will be Mr. Stevens. Will coach Bill Chumbler and the captains of Carroll High School please step forward to receive that third place trophy. Mr. Stevens, if you please. Congratulations to Carroll High School, this year's third place finisher in Class A. All right, it's always great to get awards, and there's nothing more honorable for a sportscaster than to be able to talk with 
one of the most well-known basketball fans in the state of Illinois, Governor Jim Edgar, is back with us again this year. And, you know, we were talking about the interesting, contrasting style of the two teams you're seeing out here. You're a good basketball fan. How do you summarize that first half? Well, it has been a, a classic clash of the, kind of the fast-paced basketball you see more in the Chicago area with the slow, deliberate game you used to see downstate. You don't see it quite as much, but uh, so far it seems Stott has been getting the better of it and controlled the tempo of this game, which maybe has surprised some people. It's uh, such a close game. Maybe there's some sense about that controlled uh, offense that you learned back in growing up in Charleston, Illinois. Well, I, uh, they tried to teach me that. I was pretty controlled, but my offensive output wasn't too good. Staunton, though, I think has played a perfect tonight. And, uh, again, this is, you can't have a better game than the way this game shaped up. Great shooting percentage, too. You know, you mentioned control. Uh, you and I were talking here off camera a moment ago about the sportsmanship issue. The IHSA has made a very big issue of it, and rightfully so. From all the games I go to, I'm seeing the results on a positive nature. Well, I think that's so important. I mean, it's it's good to win, and we all like to win, but the reason for high school sports is to teach uh, teamwork, discipline, respect, and uh, too often, as we were talking, sometimes maybe the adults uh, don't set the best example for the kids, and it spills over, but uh, stressing sportsmanship to me is the most important thing you can do in athletics. Real briefly, Governor, we're going to be leaving here in a moment. Tell me about how you are when you're out there watching your son play basketball. Well, it's been a few years, but uh, I never yell, but I used to pound my fist a little bit on the uh, the wooden seats an awful lot. Uh, it's tough on a parent. It's a lot tougher on the parent watching the game than I think it is on the uh, kids playing it. Great to see you here again, Great Governor. To be here. Governor Jim Edgar, our guest here at halftime, and we will be back to the boys' Class A championship game at the break. It's just an easy edge for the Bulldogs in the locker room over the Spartans by three. Thank you, Governor. We are back at Assembly Hall and standing by with Joe Passion is Coach Tom Shields of Hales Franciscan. Joe? I mentioned to Randy this kind of game their coach grows old after a while, but you've always remarked your team comes back when their backs are against the wall. Well, that's been the pattern. Let's hope we got one more of those left in us. What major adjustments do you make here in the second half to get that turned around? We just have to play. That was, that was as bad a half as we played all year. We, we just have to play. Uh, right. we, we didn't guard anybody. Uh, uh, we just have to play up to our capabilities. All right, Tom, go get him. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom Shields. Back now to half court where Jim and Greg are standing by. Well, you heard Coach Randy Legender say that he's never played against a team that sends all five people to the boards, but that's what he's going to have to contend with here in the second half. Let's take a look at some of our first half highlights in this Class A state championship game. Well, there's Ron Hampton. Nice little dribble drive. He slips through the defense. And nice bucket that time by uh, Ron Hampton of Staunton. And one of the big men. Uh, Kuba right there. They hook up together. Kuba inside to Meyer. Meyer with a nice finish on the play. One of the finest players in Chicago coming up. Well, the state of Illinois right there. Greg Wood didn't get the shot to go. Stays with it nicely. Little rebound basket. Little kiss off the glass. Count the hoop for Greg Wood. And there's a the long outlet pass right there. You've got Lonnie Brown on a fast break and the finish by Brown. Everybody contributing for, of course, Staunton, including this guy. Well, that's a good look. Skirtage finds the open spot. Kuba spots him in the turnaround, a little pull-up jumper on the baseline by Brad Skirtage. And one of those youngsters that Tom Shields throws out in the floor. Well, he's a freshman. He looks to shoot to three, likes the three, looks down, finds the arc, steps back, drains the three. Our scoring leaders at this point, of course, led by Kuba and Meyer. Who else? And they get in on the other side of the ledger, Chicago Hells. They're led by Baker with eight points. Brown was six, Wood was six. Our scoring summer is brought to you by Milk and the people who produce milk, the dairy farm families of Wisconsin and Illinois. 63% for Staunton, 12 of 19, 37% <laughs> for Hales, 9 of 12, 75 for Staunton. And you look down through there, rebounds, one edge to Hales, turnovers, eight for Staunton, only three for Hales. Can Staunton keep up that field goal percentage? Can they pull off the upset or will Hales rise above it? We're returning after these local messages is underway, controlling the tip and the basket by Brown. Chicago Hales Franciscan back to within one, just like that. 
Another turnover coming your way. Brown's got a two on three situation. So he'll just wait for some help as Williams gets back out front. Baker is starting the second half. Brown wants to give his team the lead and does. Lonnie Brown just cannot be stopped today. Uh, Lonnie Brown just knocks down another jumper. He's got a nice stroke from the outside and two quick baskets by Brown. Now it's a one point lead for Hales. And now another turnover. Three straight turnovers for Staunton. And you know exactly what Tom Shields told his kids at halftime. I didn't like that half a basketball at all. Show me what you really can do. And that is what they are doing. Our score 34 33 in favor of Hales Franciscan will return following these local messages. For the keys to winning a state championship, what's the report card look like so far, Greg Sterick? Well, right now for Hales, they really didn't control the inside game. Kuba and Meyer have been pretty effective. It wasn't an up-tempo ball game, and their defense really didn't create a lot of offense in the first half. For Staunton, they did control the tempo, handle the pressure defense. They're really not doing a good job of that, especially to start the second half. They've now turned the basketball over 11 times. They've gotten their hands on the ball three times and have not gotten a shot off in this half. Wood will get one off. That won't go. Tipped around and fought for by number 50, KUBA. You call him Kuba, you can just call him good. Ball tipped out of bounds by a hustling Wood who can come out and play defense, stay underneath and play defense. Tom Shields a good job at the intermission getting his ball club to really step it up on that defensive end. The defensive intensity much better here to start the second half. Same starting five and here's another turnover. That's four turnovers in the first minute and a half for Staunton. They will have to rectify that situation or kiss their championship chances goodbye. Stanton and Baker. That's Baker, 34 inside the arc. That's a two, and that's a three-point lead for Hales Franciscan, who's not missing much here in the second half. I would have loved to listen in on Mr. Shield's speech at halftime. Staunton needs to get off the snide here. They need to get a shot off, basically. There's the baseline, Skirtich can't get it to fall. They haven't touched the rim yet. May back and he's fouled on the way up. And I think Stanton got it. Right place, right time, right attitude for Jeremy May there. The junior will go to the free throw line. Well, May right there in the right spot. He takes it up strong on the play. And Stanton and Wood also on the inside. And I think the personal foul is going to be on Greg Wood. And it's Ooh. his third personal Ooh. foul. They were both there and they did give it to Wood. And that is his third. Big play. Everything was going Hales Franciscan's way until that particular play. And now let's see if the Bulldogs can get on the board here in the second half. Yeah. There you get a good look at Randy Legender. One of the nicest guys you'll meet. Always got a smile on his face. Even when he's up early in the morning in the hotel room where I saw him this morning. Wearing some unbelievable shorts he was wearing, too. It's pretty casual, wasn't it? He was cash. One of two at the free throw line. Spartans get it inside to Stanton. They'll throw it up, won't get it. Tipped, not there. Tipped again, and Stanton has it back. Woods down there on the blocks, being contested by Skirtich. Uh, Wood and Stanton both really working inside the post up. Nice defensive play by Skirtage right there. Great defensive work. He read the mail and came out and took it. Hampton has his pass knocked out of bounds. Hampton, Meyer, and Kuba have been the three scoring guns in this tournament for the Bulldogs. Kuba with 59, Meyer with 42, Hampton with 35, all those three game totals. Kuba lost it on the way up. Skirtich had it blocked away. Quick hands by Hales Franciscan. Of course, some Staunton fans wanted a foul. They didn't get their wish. Williams down. Stanton up. Missed everything. It'll go out of bounds. Well, whatever momentum that Hales Franciscan gathered coming out of the locker room, it seems to have subsided somewhat. They got those quick turnovers and buckets, but now we're back to even Steven basketball. Well, the, Hills was very hot coming out. I think they got to score some easy points. Their defense got them some easy points when they've had to get into a half-court game or some kind of an offensive set. They've struggled. And after that shot, Stanton sets down, and Jamar Turner comes in. And when he's May ball, contested out front. You know Turner's going to be looking to shoot the basketball. Here's another quick steal, quick hands by Turner, and also uh, Lonnie Brown. 
We've played just about three and a half minutes now here in the third quarter. Williams steps up, too much iron. Ball headed out of bounds. Turner saved it. Turner driving, lost it, and traveled with it, or was he fouled before the travel call? Well, we're going to think he walked. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. I knew he traveled, but I didn't know at what point the whistle came. Now with Best in the in the ball game, Jim, he's only 5'8". He's going to have to do a good job taking care of the basketball. There you go. Move it up quick. Best wears number 14, and now almost another turnover. Quick hands there by Sean Baker. Only one big man in there now for Staunton. That's him right there. Meyer forces it. Gets it. 36-36. We're back to a tie. Will Staunton still be around after three quarters? Hales Franciscan doesn't want them to be, and neither does Turner, but he misses the shot. Kuba with a rebound. Kuba now with 10 rebounds. Good job by Kuba on the glass. Really Staunton doing a good job on the glass. The rebound's uh, only a two-edge for uh, Hales in 19-17. Kuba driving, shut down in the lane, and he'll kick it right back out to Hampton. Yeah, Best came in for Jeremy May. So the two big men are still in there. And along the baseline, we've got a lot of contact and a foul. That could be in about three people. If it's on wood, that'll be big news. Let's see what the official has to say. No, it's going to be on Baker. A good look on the inside by Hampton. Well, look at the pass there by Kuba. Meyer slipping in on the baseline. Good body control. Takes it up strong to the glass, and he's fouled on the play. And Baker's going to get the personal foul. It's going to be Meyer at the line. And Meyer in this ball game, three of four from the stripe. 11 points on the evening. Greg Wood was right there to contest it, though, playing with three. Wood fouled out in today's semifinal game against Cairo. Right there. Meyer will try to give his Bulldogs a two-point lead. He looks pretty calm. It stays at one. Williams up quickly. Baker's got a lane. He's got an angle, and he's got two. Well, that's a quick move. Big first step. Just accelerated strong to glass. Got the two-point. Franciscan coming down to play defense with a one-point lead. Will Meyer take it away? He will. That's the shooter's touch. Well, looked off. Got it up on the rim, and... Fell through for Meyer. Meyer now with 14 points. Kubler 13. That's 27 or 39 stone points. Williams wants to go inside for Woods. Woods will spin it off the glass. Woods is there again, and he got it. Well, Woods stayed with it nicely, but see, that drop step is what got him free. Missed the first shot, but then he got the easy stick back. Well, well, hustle play. Yeah, Hampton had a three-on-one created there, but coming up from behind was a hustling Ralph Williams, who then traveled with the basketball as he tried to throw it back in. Tom Shields in his third year. Inbounding to Hampton. Shot won't get there, but the putback will by Meyer. Boy, an offensive rebound one more time. Meyer all over the offensive glass, and Meyer gets the stick back. And Meyer with two offensive rebounds. And his board work inside has got him two baskets off those uh, offensive rebounds. Lead change, lead change, lead change again. Compliments of Sean Baker. <laughs> Who's going to stop this momentum? Well, it won't be Staunton. Oh, that looked like goaltender. Oh, almost goaltender. That looked like goaltending Almost goaltending. I'd have to see that one again, but it almost looked like goaltending. And it, I think Randy Legender definitely thinks it was goaltending. This ball. Have an opportunity to make the decision. The shot up on the board. Oh, it's off the glass. Yeah, the That's shot hit the glass. The shot hit the, the ball hit the uh, the glass. It had to be a goaltending call. Had to be goaltending on that call. Once it hits the glass, that's a no-no. No miles. Did not touch. But we had the advantage of that replay, too. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's why that job out there with the striped shirts is so darn tough. Things happen quickly. Turner gets it over to Baker. Rebound comes out. We've got a whistle and a foul underneath, and it will go against. It's going to be Lonnie Brown up over the back. 
Well, they just crash the boards, don't they? They certainly do. Now it's going to be the personal foul is on number 21, Lonnie Brown. Yeah, the way Greg Wood walked out of there, I thought, oh, my goodness, not four on him. That's not what Hales Franciscan needs right now. All five of Hales players just crashed that offensive board. You better hurry. You better hurry. Kuba finally gets it in. Just beating the five-second clock. Skirtich, Hampton, foul from behind by Williams. Williams now with three fouls. I know that Staunton wanted those two points at the other end, but they're going to have to forget about it. Now, Hales is ringing up that uh, foul board for Staunton. You know, they're playing defense without committing very many fouls. They've only had three fouls called on them in the entire ball game. Man, that's hard to believe, isn't it? Best gets it down low. Kuba had it taken away, but Skirtage came up with a loose ball. Meyer to Kuba, blocked by Wood, but he has now picked up his fourth personal foul. The fourth on Mr. Wood, and that is much to Staunton's advantage. Well, a good look on the inside. Just good ball move by Staunton. The post-up move, Wood was behind Kuba on the play. Kuba, quick drop step, strong to the glass, and he was fouled from behind. A personal foul on uh, Greg Wood. Wood's going to have to leave, and you can see he's disappointed. Fourth personal foul with uh, still 130 left here in the, uh, the third quarter of play. And Greg, you know between sessions, we try to get a feeling for the game. We talk to a lot of reporters. We talk to the people around Assembly Hall. And the general feeling was that a lot of folks thought Hales was going to run away with this thing. Well, they didn't check with Staunton, apparently, because they are in a tie situation with a minute 25 remaining in the third quarter. We're tied at 42. This is Ralph Williams. He is in foul trouble as well. Brown can operate out front, doesn't want the shot. Nice defense by Skirtich, but he was taken back in by Turner, who hangs, does not hit. Good defensive rebounding position as Kuba brings in another one. Yeah, once again, Kuba, good job of checking out, and Staunton just doing a good job of just sealing Hales off the glass. Hampton steps in, nothing there. I'll be looking for Kuba or Meyer. You can bet on that. Ooh, Meyer hitting the head that time. Now he almost throws it away. Meyer was hit in the face. He can't see. Hampton can see the lane. Oh, beautiful drive by Hampton. Slips in. Hampton splits two defenders. Gets it the little fellow with a finger row. Staunton with the lead as the third quarter is almost history. 31 seconds remaining. Shot no. Kuba rebound, yes. And Staunton, unless they turn it over, will have the lead heading into the fourth quarter of the state championship game. What a move by Hampton that last time. Down to 12 seconds. Kuba can shoot from outside. Don't forget about that. Best being contested by Turner. Best tries to shake him, and he's fouled by Turner. With four and a half seconds remaining. We're going to have some fresh legs in now for Hales Franciscan checking in. Kaim Cunningham, and also back in the ball game is Stanton, Keith Stanton. Of course, Tom Shields trying to do something that only one other man in the history of Illinois basketball has done, and that is win two separate championships with two different teams. The last man to do it did it back in 1935 inside the Kuba. Can't get it. Great rejection by Stanton. Man, that was a great defensive save at the end of the third quarter. We've got a ball game. Eight minutes remaining in the state championship game. There's a two-point difference. We'll return following these local messages at Assembly Hall. After three quarters, is brought to you by Toyota. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Well, the game summary, 15 turnovers for Staunton. Look at the free throw line, 12 of 18 from the line. Myers, 16 points. Kuba with 14 points. And for Hales, 12 0 points off turnovers, 11 0 bench scoring, 17 uh, team fouls. And they only, uh, have only made two free throws from the stripe. Great drive by Hampton. Splits two defenders. Good body control. And the little guy with a finger roll on the inside. Count the basket by Hampton. Hampton with seven points. How do you spell excitement in a Class A state championship game. How about five ties and 14, count them, 14 lead changes. Somebody is going to make history in the fourth quarter unless we see OT. Who will that somebody be right now? Staunton has a two-point lead. Kuba will try an inbound. He does so to best. 
Brad Best is a senior as well. In a very pressurized situation right now, trying to get around those long and quick defensive arms of Hales Franciscan. Down low, Kubi kicks it right back out. He tried to go baseline. That was slapped away nicely by Kaim Cunningham. Hampton's really done a nice job in taking care of the basketball for Stunt. I know they've turned the basketball over, uh, you know, 15 times, but he's still done a nice job taking care of it against tough pressure defense of Hales. Meyer, 14 footer. Kevin Meyer gets stuck in the four-point lead. Again, Greg Wood, the leading scorer for Chicago Hales Franciscan, on the bench, nursing four fouls. Williams. Cunningham got it to fall. Big shot by Kaim Cunningham. I guess they're all big from here on out, but he'll go to the line trying to make three. That's a tough shot, too. He caught it on the baseline. It was a, it was a good look inside. He spins away. Instead of going right, he goes towards the baseline and boy, stays with a shot nicely. Nice follow through. And Cunningham knocks it down. And you're right, a big basket that time. And Hales really needed a big hoop, and Cunningham, Cunningham stepped up and knocked it down. That was a mismatch down low because Cunningham at 6'6 was going against Brad Best at 5'8. All he had to do was get position and spin, and that's what he did. Is the three complete? It is. We've got a one-point ball game again. Staunton with the lead. Here comes the pressure. Kuba breaks it momentarily. Hampton almost lost it, but gets it back into Kuba. Man. Down low it goes Kuba. He goes across the court and a great steal and then knocked out of bounds. Last touch, they say, by Staunton. That was a great steal by David Stennis. Stennis stepped in there, prevented what would have been an easy bucket. Usually, with this much time remaining in the final quarter, you say a lot of time left. But when it's the state championship game, there's not a lot of time left. Just seven minutes. Foul down low on the block. That'll go against Staunton. I like what Hales is doing on the offensive end. A little more patience on the offensive end. Where they really have the advantage is on the inside. They, they haven't really taken that advantage. But here in the fourth quarter, they've gone inside. Cunningham responded. And they look like they want to continue to go inside, either to Stanton or to Baker or to Stennis on the inside. But Darren Williams to take that shot. That was only the third team foul. There it is, the Stanton. They're, going inside, the See, they're yep. going inside with it. Stanton's right there with, with a nice basket. And now they almost throw it away as Hampton gathers. He's pinched, gets rid of it. Kuba is so collected back there. He never handles. Staunton trailing by one. Kuba has a lane. He'll go up against three defenders and he'll go to the line. That was tough defense, but of course, if bodies bang down there, the call always goes the offensive way for the most part, and Kuba earned that trip to the free throw line. But it was a nice play by Kuba. Yeah. The defense lunged at him, he put it on the floor, it took it strong to the glass, and then a little pump fake, and they bought it. He went up, and Kuba was fouled on the play. And, and Kuba, 69% free throw shooter on the year. Kuba with 14 points, he's four of five from the line in this ball game. It almost looked like an isolation play, didn't it? They cleared out the entire right side and let Kuba do what he does best, and that is creating the net. Yeah, he just created, <laughs> created something for himself. We're 15 feet away from a tie. Nope. He'll get another chance. We've had nine lead changes in the second half alone, eight occurring in the third quarter, and that ties the ball game up at 47. Hales Franciscan against Staunton in what could be one of the classic closers of a State A championship game. Williams from outside. It, that's a two. He was on the line. He was on the line, and Williams gives Franciscan a two-point lead. Hampton waits, finds May, and that's a foul out front. And Kaim Cunningham agrees. Yes, I didn't get there in time. You're right. Yeah, no question about that call right there. The pass right there goes goes to Maine, and May puts it on the floor, and Cunningham gets him with the leg. He just didn't really get out there and get set to try and take that charge for Cunningham. Third personal foul. And now, for the rest of the fourth quarter, the team in red will be in the bonus situation. This guy's a good free throw shooter, but he doesn't get the rotation that time. May missed the free throw. Every trip down. 
of great importance now. Cunningham driving, hanging, doesn't hit it. Rebound, the little guy, Ron Hampton. A lot of standing by Hales on the offensive end on that possession. I think they need a little more movement on the offensive end. I think they can spring people open inside. Meyer off the glass too hard. Tipped around. Meyer's there. Kubik's there, and he got it. What a follow by Kubik. What a follow by Kubik. Stayed with it nicely. Things going his way. A kiss off the glass. Another two-pointer for Kuba. Kuba now with 17 points. Meyer and Kuba hanging around that glass. Kuba falling backwards as he made that one to tie the game up. Williams with a lane. And he'll be fouled. Or oh, are they going to call the charge? They're going to call the charge on Williams. Not only is it a charge, it's his fourth personal of the game. Well, that was good weak side help by Meyer. Good weak side defensive help. Player control, foul number 20, Ralph Williams, his fourth. Getting set to check back in, Greg Wood. Number 30, Wood, Wood playing with four fouls. Lonnie Brown will also come in. Number 21, Lonnie Brown back in. Sampson Essex Spartans. will come in. Number I know that Tom Shields wanted to wear Essex. down Staunton. This also is probably in. where we'll see if it worked because there's only five minutes left, only one substitution all game long for the Bulldogs. Well, I, I think you're right. The fatigue's going to set in, but, but right now I think emotion still. I yeah. think they're still playing on emotion. That adrenaline is pumping pretty hard right now. We got a ball game. We're all tied up at 49 all. Down low. Great pass to Kuba. Oh, they just keep coming at him. Hampton with the assist. I don't even see how he was able to, to spot Kuba on the inside, let alone deliver a pass like that. The delivery by Hampton, the finish by Kuba. And Kuba went up, got it, gathered it in, spun and hit it. Down low along the baseline. We've got a whistle and a foul as they went down low to their main man, Brown. But again now, only four team fouls on Staunton. Look at this feed. Well, the pass set it all up. you got to have activity on the inside. Kuba very active inside. The delivery by Hampton, and Kuba with a nice finish. Four minutes and 36 seconds remain. It's 51-49. Staunton, one of your network sponsors, is DuPont. There you see the Staunton Bulldogs huddle. Staunton made a great run in the final four minutes of today's game against Hamilton, and that got him here. And, of course, if you did not see the quarterfinal game, Staunton fell behind 11 to nothing at the outset and still came back to win it. So they're never out of it, and they're certainly not out of this. But Hales Franciscan can beat you in so many ways. They have such great talent. Ball slapped away for a moment, but Lonnie Brown gathers it back in. This is Brown with a step in. Oh, sweet shot. Sweet shot for Lonnie Brown, and it's tied at 51. He's so tough off that drill. He takes it off the drill, and then just stops and pulls up and hits that jump. Hampton penetrating. May is open. He's looking. He's got to get out of that lane, and he does. Meyer stops. Eight-footer won't be there, and the rebound gathered in by Brown. So Staunton misfires, and Hales Franciscan can take the lead at the four-minute mark. Four minutes remaining. Brown left open. And hits it. He changes direction in midair, thus drawing the foul and the chance to put his team up by three. Great body control that time by Brown. Had the shot, watch the hang time, leans in. Boy, it never takes his eyes off the basket. You notice good shooters just keep their eye on the basket. They watch the ball fall through. Brown with the basket, a chance to complete the three point play the old fashioned way. Personal foul on. Skirtage. And Skirtage thought he was going to take the shot out a little farther. He didn't think he was going to drive to the right of the defensive man, but that he did, and that's a big three-pointer as Staunton trails now, thanks to Lonnie Brown. Inside it goes. Myers open. He gets it slapped out of there by Stanton. Well, Meyer got by his man, but uh, Stanton saw what was going to happen down low, and he just came bursting across the lane. Yeah, and Hales has that ability to score points in bunches. Yep. <laughs> That's why you got to stop him all the time. Out front, big shot, May won't make it. Rebound, Kuba up and in. That time the air ball was in Staunton's favor because I don't think that Chicago Hales Franciscan expected it not to hit the rim. And Kuba was there, driving Baker, can't get it to fall. Back up and it won't fall, but to the line will go Sean Baker. 
There's Tom Shields. He looks pretty calm, but I think it's kind of like the duck, you know, underneath the water. They're paddling like crazy. So inside, he's, he wants that second state championship. I think he likes to run as ball club's making on the offensive end, but I still think he wants a little better effort. Sealing, stomping off the offensive boards. Here's Baker. Team up by two now. And Staunton respond. Baker makes them both. Three free throws in a row now for Hales Franciscan. As they make them when they need them. Essex trying to dog Hampton. Hampton penetrates. Puts it up and doesn't get it to fall, but it go to the free throw line. If that had gone in, the entire Staunton contingent might have come down on the floor and slapped Ty Fies all over him. And Hampton's not afraid to take it in there among the tall people on the inside. He really works hard. See how he takes it in strong, and then he's hammered on the play, and Hampton's going to go to the line. It's a nice ball game. He's one of two from the strike, but he's a good free throw shooter at 75%, and they need two right here. That man you just saw a close-up of, Lonnie Brown, committed the personal foul. We are back to within two. Are we headed for another dramatic finish? It would seem that way. Hales Franciscan with a one point lead in the basketball. We approach the three minute mark here at Assembly Hall. Winner takes it all. Drive Brown, yeah, tough move. Tough, tough down the lane. That is hard to stop because he's floating away from the defense. He gets there so quick, doesn't he? Man, he can close by you. He's got a first step any coach would love. Pressure out front. Almost threw it away. Meyer with a tough shot. Defender all over him. Ball's kicked around and brought out of there by Greg Wood. The other way, a steal. A steal by May. Well, just what it looked like Franciscan might pad the lead a bit. They throw the turnover, and we've got a timeout on the floor. The numbers tell it all, although the emotions have a lot more to say about it and will before this game is over. Hales Franciscan has a three-point lead at 58 to 55. Brown floating home those last two. <laughs> well, Brown's almost unstoppable when he really takes it strong in the glass, and Brown's responded very well. Brown with 17 points. I like the timeout by Randy Legender. Let's go into the huddle and see if we can uh, hear what the coach is telling the squad. Over the band. Gender saying just one shot, and of course Tom Shield saying if we get the ball back and we have a three-point lead, we go into Spartan time. Spartan time means we take our time, in essence. I think Randy and Jenner, he also wants his ball, but they need to shoot good shots. You know, there's still a lot of time left. And shot selection right now at this stage of the game, very, very important. Jeff. Hampton working up against Williams. Wood, of course, playing with four fouls. They want to draw a foul on him, and they get a foul down low, but this one will go against Sean Baker. To the free throw line will go Andy Kuba. Think he needs these, Greg? I think these are big free throws. We're down to the 221 mark in the ball game. Kuba's at the line, and he's had a tremendous ball game with 21 points. He's five of seven for the line, but his ball club is trailing by three. The one and one is in. Now you don't really want to be down by five or six to this Hales Franciscan team because they have so much speed. They can keep the ball away from you. You're going to have to foul them. But of course, Staunton has a couple more fouls yet to give. Check it. They only have one more to give before the bonus is in effect. Williams brings it up. 
Kuba responds well at the free throw line. One point game. Baker with the basketball for Hales Franciscan. Brown loves to drive the lane. Then he'll kick it out to Williams. Good defense. Brown again. Brown with a tough hanger. Doesn't get it. Rebound. Skirtich for Stockton. Up ahead all alone is Meyer. Good look up the floor. Meyer right there doing the job running the floor. Now it's a Stockton lead at 59-58. 1.45 left in the ball game. How quickly that turned. Williams now. Nobody got back on defense, and Meyer was just waiting for a pass. Baker hangs. No, rebound Kuba. Stoughton has the basketball and the lead with a minute 30 remaining. Well, you better give Hampton some help right here. Excuse me, Jim, and Hampton's going to need some help because the pressure's coming at him. A bucket would look huge here for Stoughton. He finally gets it out to May. Skirtich waiting. Skirtich drives. Gets it down low to May. He has it blocked out of bounds. I don't know if May wanted to be down there, but once he got down there, he thought, well, let's give it a shot. That was a good look inside, but Skirtage, he, he tried to give it the fake. Nobody bought it, and then there was Stan who gets a good block. Skirtage looked wide open, doesn't want the shot. You can almost feel the hearts beating here at Assembly Hall. Staunton trying for the lead. Kuba, he won't take a bad shot. He rarely does. Down to a minute, a minute remaining. Here's Kuba, one-on-one, -on -one, goes to the glass and gets it! He's got the shot, and he'll go to the free throw line. What a big-time play by Andy Kuba, and now all the pressure is on Hales Franciscan. A beautiful move on the inside. Kuba active on the inside, really battling hard. He set himself up. Look at this move right here. He wanted it. He takes it strong to the glass. He slips by Baker on the play. A kiss off the window. A beautiful basket that time by Kuba. Kuba now with 25 points. Watch the spin move. Watch the drop step. The drop step right there. Hang time for Kuba. Off the window for the deuce. This ball game, of course, a long way from being over, but let's take it in order. First of all, the free throw. The free throw would give Staunton a four-point advantage. That is big in itself. Then, of course, you've got to go down to the other end and play some defense, and you know, of course, that Hales Franciscan will be attacking the basket right away. They'll take very little time. Well, I think what uh, the other thing you have to keep in mind, I mean, Staunton, they're going to have to knock down some free throws down the stretch because they're going to get fouled. They've been pretty effective at the line. They've scored 17 points in the stripe. They're 17 of 25. They've actually outscored Hales 17 to 6 from the stripe. Let's give some credit to the guards from Staunton, too. They have withstood a lot of pressure. Yes, they have created some turnovers of their own, but uh, they, they have held their own for the most part and gotten it into the big men, Meyer and Kubel. Let's go into the huddle. Here is Coach Randy Legender. That is what Tom Shields just told Hales Franciscan. Look, we can win. We've done this before, and they have had a history in this tournament of coming from behind, and they're going to have to do it again here with 54 seconds remaining. And I always like a coach that challenges his players. Yeah. What are we made of, fellas? We've been able to do this before. That's a challenge right there. Well, let's see if Mr. Kuba can respond with yet another important digit on the scoreboard. What a move he made down low to give the Bulldogs a three-point lead. Franciscan has to score this time. Williams drives. Time's a waste and down low it goes. Stoughton, they got it done. And now we've got a two-point ball game again with pressure forthcoming. Kuba gets it into Hampton. You see the time remaining in this game. Will it go to OT? Hampton almost had it knocked away. He's double teamed. Look at him work out of trouble. Kuba now with a basketball. Time's a waste. Hampton. 
Skirdich is alone across the lane, but they can't get it to him. We've got a whistle and a foul. Baker with the personal. Hampton will go to the free throw line. 21 seconds remain. The Staunton crowd holding its collective breath. Yeah, I don't think it's time to celebrate just yet. There's still a lot of basketball to be played in the final 21.4 seconds of the ball game. And Hales was out chasing the basketball. And Staunton, an excellent job taking care of the basketball. Kuba and Hampton, excellent ball handling. A lot of pressure on this young man. He's a good free throw shooter at 77%. Tonight's ball game is three of four. Watch it. The Staunton bench. 21 seconds away from a memory no one can take away from them. A state championship on the floor of Assembly Hall. Another timeout. Plenty of timeouts for both teams. They both had two before that timeout was taken by Hales Franciscan. They try to put a little pressure on Ron Hampton, make him think about it. Of course, again, if we get to a four-point deficit, Hales has got to hurry. Now, they're still playing down. I think what Hales is going to do, if the free throw goes in, they're going to get up the floor quick. They're going to put the basketball in the hands of Alani Brown and just go quick and pull it straight to the hole and try and get an easy basket and then a timeout to set their press. Here's Tom Shields. defense. If you're down by one after you score or two, call a quick timeout. Hampton has already made one free throw. Ron Hampton at the line for Some kids dream about being in this situation. Others tend to shy away from it. Ron Hampton wants to be there. That's why. Four-point lead. Hales Franciscan in a hurry. 19 seconds remaining. Williams all the way down. Gets the layup. And they call timeout just as instructed by their coach, Tom Seals. Yeah, just what I expected, too. They were just going to give it to a player and let him just take it strong to the hole and just blow by the defense of a stunt and get the basket. And then with a quick timeout. There's a good look right there on the play as Ralph Williams, he just takes it strong to the rack and he gets it up on the glass and count the two-pointer. Then the quick timeout. Very alert timeout. Run anybody and everybody got to match up. Nobody can break through. Uh, you are denying full court, whoever's bad. You're denying the other guy. So we're running everybody all over the court. Don't let them get in. You're playing for a five-second vote. Now listen, you gotta, I got a lot of information here. How much time? Staunton only his second year as the head coach there. Of course, as we said earlier, he's been at Staunton before. He's a well-known member of the community. If he wins this one, they'll put a big crown on his head. Yeah, they, he reminded his ball club they've still got some timeouts left. They still have two timeouts left, no timeouts left for Hales. And Hales is going to throw up the press. They're going to face guard and deny all over the floor. And we've got a foul away from the basketball. Williams will be whistled for the foul, and he is gone. Williams has picked up his fifth personal foul. No time off the clock. That is the good news for Hales Franciscan, but the bad news is they lose their point guard. Uh, he's going to check out of the ball game. But yeah, that is five personal fouls. He's fouled out with nine points. Will Ralph Williams be on the bench when his team wins or loses? And now checking in is Samson Essex. <laughs> what a situation for a sophomore, huh? 
See who's going to the free throw line. It looks like Hampton again. Yeah, he's out there with another pretty good sophomore, Lonnie Brown, too. Boy, he's outstanding. I like the way Lonnie Brown plays. Yeah, I just can't relate the, the word sophomore to Lonnie Brown. It just doesn't fit, you know? Well, here's Hampton back where he was just seconds ago, about seven seconds to be exact. Can he duplicate his one on one feet? I think that pretty much tells it all. Brother. Ron Hampton, only a junior. Probably the smallest kid out there of 131 pounds. How big's his heart? That big. Four points again. Does Hales Franciscan have any time? Lonnie Brown, 4-3, not there. Rebound fought for. It's one by Turner. Turner going baseline. Lost it out of bounds. He lost it out of bounds. Has Staunton won the state championship? They're pretty close, 3.4 seconds. But they're celebrating a little bit early. I think they thought the clock had already run down. They still got to get the ball in. Kuba can call timeout and does. That leaves them with one timeout. The drama continues. See, I think the emotion just it just set in. Hampton knocked down those four free throws. He made a big play on the defensive end, but it wasn't time to celebrate. They needed to get the basketball on the bounce. Watch Hampton number 20. Watch the little guy. Look at him celebrate. See, he's running right here. He's running. He's celebrating. He's pumped up. He's pumped up, but he's forgot. We, there's still 3.4 seconds on the clock, and Kuba is back there. He needs some help. He's happy. He's happy. And Legender said, hey, we have time left. Let's not celebrate yet. I, I've been in this business too long, man. 66-62. You can see the emotion on the face of the Hales Franciscan players. Hey, quite honestly, when they beat Carroll today, a lot of folks, maybe them too, thought they had won the state championship because that was a great game. Franciscan played without their starter Sean Baker who was back in the hotel sick. Baker has regrouped and been out here tonight but now the Spartans are looking for a steal and a bit of a miracle. And now a whistle. Somebody throws something onto the court. That matter is taken care of now. You still got to get the basketball in right here. You still got to inbound the basketball. If they get it done now they'll over. be fouled. It's over. It's over. It's over. The Staunton Bulldogs have done it. They are the Class A state champions of 1993. And if anybody deserved the title, it's the Bulldogs. Unbelievable, Jim. They came in here. They had the upset in mind. They weren't the favorite team to win the championship. They knock off the much heralded Hales basketball team. They win it 66 to 62. Outstanding play. The inside play of Kuba and Meyer. And I think let's just watch. Let's just lay out and watch. Look at the celebration. There's Randy Legender and Joe Passion has him. Joe. Title in any sport, you've got to feel like a king. I feel great. Uh, I'm so proud of the kids. Uh, we didn't get a lot of recognition, but came time to play some defense and under control offense. I just thought. They did a tremendous job. Well, this was one of your big reasons why Kuba played a great game. Congratulations, Andy. A tremendous outing on your part. Andy, come over here for a minute. Tell me a little bit about down the stretch when the game kept going back and forth. Oh, we just want to try to be fundamentally sound. So hopefully we can get the ball in the hole and execute our plays. It seems like fundamentals like free throws, half-court offenses, half-court defenses, man-to-man, -man, all those fundamental things of small-town basketball.
Gender, a tremendous victory for him, overcoming great odds and beating Hales Franciscan. In the meantime, we'll send it back over to center court to Jim and Greg. There were so many big plays in this basketball game and so many lead changes, but the one play you got to go back to is Andy Kuba down low, left side of the basket, late in the ball game. He set himself up for that shot. Once he got it, he put it off the glass, completed the three-point play, and then the kid named Ron Hampton calmly sank four free throws to nail it down. Now let's take a look at our player of the game, and in this case, it'll be co-players of the game. It's brought to you by Melk. Enjoy real dairy products. Look for the real seal in your grocer's dairy case. Well, there's one of the heroes. Andy Kuba gets 26 points and 14 rebounds, 9 of 12 from the floor, 8 of 10 from the strike. He got a lot of help, though, didn't he, on the inside? <laughs> he <laughs> a lot certainly of help did. Very balanced attack. And there's the other player, Kevin Meyer. He gets 20 points and he gets uh, six rebounds. He's eight of 17 from the floor, four of six from the strike. He gets 20. Kuba and Meyer, they hook up for 46 points in the victory. A big win for Staunton. They win the Class A state championship, 66 to 62. Here's our Car X Scholar Athlete Awards. Kaim Cunningham, of course, who is headed to Appalachian State. And that man you're very well familiar with, his name is Kuba. Andy Kuba of Staunton. We're going to come back at Assembly Hall and take more looks at this celebration with Staunton, one of your network sponsors. Yeah, your number one is DuPont. The game brought to you by American Airlines and American Eagle. Something special in the air, and it was special, all right. Well, it's nice to have two go-to guys on the same floor, Meyer and Kuba. This one's Kuba. They go to him, the drop step. He turns, stays with it nicely. A nice kiss off the glass and a basket by Andy Kuba, and that's the American Airlines play of the game. We talk about playing under control, and now let's go to center court. You see Governor Edgar there, and now Steve Adams has all the names that made history during that here tonight at Assembly Hall. And the second recipient, University High School of Normal. And accepting for the Pioneers, head coach Cal Hubbard and assistant coach Selby Hubbard. The member schools of the Illinois High School Association thank all of you here at the Assembly Hall for your participation in and support of good sportsmanship. Particularly, congratulations to Dakota and Normal U High. Here's your final statistics in this championship game, brought to you by Melk and the people who produce Melk, the dairy farm families of Wisconsin and Illinois, and look at the field goal percentage for Stunt. But that's because of a controlled offense and good shot selection. They shoot 56%, 42% for Hales. Look at the free throw, the difference there, 73%, 22 of 30 at the stripe, only six free throws for Hales, three-point field goals, two of seven for Hales, no three-pointers for Stunt. Rebounds, a good job by Stunt battling on the glass. Hales with a one edge at 29-28. Turnovers by Stunt, they only turned it over 16 times against a very, very good Hales pressure defense. And if we look back to the first two minutes of the second half, that's when Staunton really had their problems. They turned it over very quickly three times. Randy Legender then called a timeout. They did turn it over again right after that, but they got it all back together and won themselves a state championship. Here's Steve Adams again, our public address announcer. Assistant coach Michael Mulcahy. Assistant coach Billy Garrett. Assistant coach Tony Hollifield. And now at center court, let's meet the players. Number 44, David Stennis. Number 22, Barry Johnson. Number 41, Samson Essex. Number 14, Jamar Turner. Number 42, Taiwan Burnham. Number 
21, Lonnie Brown. Number 20, Ralph Williams. Number 10, Amin Burton. Number 34, Sean Baker. Number 30, Greg Wood. Number 12, Terrell Bass. Number 32, Lawrence Wilson. Number 24, Michael Steele. Number 31, Keith Stanton. At number 40, Kayeem Cunningham. Those are the Spartans of Chicago Hales Franciscan. And now presenting medallions to the squad members of the first place team will be Mr. William Mitz of Monticello High School in Monticello, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board, and Mr. Leroy Newton of Carterville High School in Carterville, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board. At this time, let's meet the Bulldogs of Staunton High School, who finished this season in first place with a final record of 27 and four. First, let's meet the principal of Staunton High School, Mr. John Milam. The head coach, Randy Legender. Assistant coach, Dave Lamore. Scorekeeper, Del Stigemeyer. Manager, John Holmes. Manager, Chris Cozart. And now at center court, let's meet the players. Number 10, Tony Del Pazzo. Number 12, Matt Popovich. Number 14, Brad Best. Number 20, Ronnie Hampton. Number 22, Corey Painter. Number 24, Lucas Calcary. Number 32, Mike Cavalli. Number 40, Derek Brower. Number 42, Jeremy May. Number 44, Brad Skirtich. Number 50, Andy Kuba. state champions, the Bulldogs of Staunton High School. And now let's get to the trophy presentations. First presenting the second place trophy will be Mr. Lawrence Stevens of Fieldcrest High School in Minunk, who serves the IHSA as the president of the board. Will coach Tom Shields and the captains of Hales Franciscan please step forward to receive the second place trophy. Mr. Stevens, if you please. Congratulations to Hales Franciscan, this year's second place finisher. And now presenting the championship trophy will be Mr. Stinson, will coach Randy Legender, and the captains of Staunton High School. Please step forward to receive the first place trophy. Mr. Stinson, if you please. And there it is, the state championship trophy to Staunton High School.
The trophy is held high for the Staunton Bulldogs, located 120 miles down the road from Champaign. You talk about making an impact on your first ever trip to the big saucer here in Champaign. Well, I guess that's as big an impact as you're going to get. We're going to come back and take a look at some of the emotional shots here during this Class A state championship game. After this, from one of your network sponsors, Country Companies Insurance. Well, there you see the state champion Staunton Bulldogs. They finished the season at 27 and 4. Chicago Hales Franciscan finishes at 23 and 10. Everybody getting into the act, and it's an act that will be remembered a long time because Cinderella wore red here tonight. We said that at the outset. We said Hales Franciscan was favored in the game. That was not detrimental in any way to Staunton, but they just had so many fine athletes, Franciscan did. We thought they'd just take the tempo to them and out-athletic them, if you if you can say that. And we're so late in the night here, I think we can say just about anything. But they got the job done, and it's a game that I will remember for a long, long time to come because there are many games that go the way they're supposed to here at Assembly Hall, and every once in a while, somebody pops up and does something they're not supposed to do, and that is pull the upset. And I don't know if, if the coach of Staunton will call it an upset at the end, but, hey, he can call it a state championship. He's just happy to have a state championship. Staunton did everything they had to do in the ballgame. They controlled the tempo, and they let their inside people really work, and they handled the pressure defense of Hales. We talked about the outstanding play of, of Kuba and also Meyer. Those two hooked up for 46 points, but the free Free throws. Yeah, Clutch big, free throws big. of Ron Hampton. Four straight free throws. Those were the game winners, and Staunton is going to remember this one for a long time as Staunton Class A state champions of 1993. We had a lot of fun bringing it to you. Jim Albrecht and Greg Sterick saying so long. We're going to send it now to Joe Passion. Take care, everybody. Well, down here on the Assembly Hall floor, it's just a lot of picture taking of the champions and their families, and they certainly are feeling and acting like champions here today. We have a video highlight of some of the great moments that have happened here during this championship game and this championship tournament. As we see Cuba, one of the outstanding players of the tournament. Is he signing autographs? No, I think he's just getting congratulated down there and enjoying an MVP status. That was his style of play here throughout this tournament. Interesting about this Staunton team winning here by four points over Hales. Andy Kuba is one of those kids that really reflects the kind of championship caliber this team meant. It reminds me, it reminds me a little bit of author Louis Lamour, who once wrote, victory is not won in miles, but in inches. You win a little now, and you gain a little. You hold your ground, and then you gain a little more. This team lost their first game of the season. If they kept piling back, they were an underdog here against Hales Franciscan of Chicago, and yet they still held on with great courage, stamina, and sound basketball skills, and won this championship here today. Let's take a look at some of the great pictures of some of the great plays that were played on this assembly hall floor of America's original March Madness. Outside.
USA Basketball Finals have been brought to you in part by Country Companies Insurance. When it matters most, the country's behind you. And by Milk and the people who produce milk, the dairy farm families of Wisconsin and Illinois. By Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. By Carex Muffler and Brake. For mufflers, brakes, and shocks, don't worry, call the Carex man. And by Toyota. I love what you do for me, Toyota. For Dick Lucky, Greg Sterick. For Dick Lucky, Greg Sterick, and Jim Albrecht. I'm Joe Passion. So long from Assembly Hall. We'll see you next week for the boys' class double-A finals from Champaign.